Morning everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Welcome if you just joined us from Facebook. So today, uh, because we have had the flood in the house and I haven't managed to post a video because we've had all the fans and things going, I thought we would create an impromptu watercolor card live on face on YouTube even. So this could go disastrously wrong or we could go fantastically well. It's an idea that I had uh, for a little while and I thought, as soon as I saw this die set, I knew that I had to uh, give it a go. Hi, Diona. Hi, Angarad. Um, so I thought, hi, Deborah, welcome back. So I thought that we would do it live together rather than doing a pre recorded. And um, I won't be able to see your comments as I'm crafting. I'll try and kind of uh, stand up as quickly as I can, but they do disappear. Hi, Vita. Uh, so I will do my best to try and respond to some of them and see them. But all of your links will be in the description below. So it's in the bottom right hand corner of the video as you're watching it. If you're on tablets or mobile devices, you'll have to click a downward arrow and all your links will be there. And also I have some coupon codes, so I'll link you over to the crafty sales page. Hi, Holly. And then also if you're on a desktop, it will say show more under the name of the video. And then again, you can just click that and all your links will be there, including the link to the crafty sales page, which I would suggest you bookmark because we update it fairly regularly at least once a week uh, with all of the latest coupon codes for all of our favorite partners so let's get started i've pulled out some supplies we'll see how this goes so let's turn it around so you can see my desktop here i don't there we go we can zoom in just a little bit as well so this is the die set i wanted to use which is new from the latest waffle flower release it's called cutaway alpha uh, morning becky and I'm going to be using my metallic accents, which are some great watercolour pigments. And what we'll do is we'll add the water in just while we're standing here waiting. Now, I can't seem to find my gesso board in all of the chaos here. So I'm going to use a Teflon mat. And my colour scheme for today is going to be reds and oranges. So I'm just going to add water to this side of the palette. And this is just a dropper bottle. Again, if you missed the beginning, everything will be linked underneath the video once it goes live. I can go back in. I've got a wide brush here. This is a number 16 from Painter's Touch brush. Uh, morning, Diane. So the reason I add the water here is it allows me a little bit of time for the pigments to dissolve and it saves me a bit of time later on and it makes sure I get a nice strong pigment in there. Just a couple of drops is fine. So as I don't have my gesso board, I'm going to work on a Teflon mat. I have my collapsible water bottle with clean water, which always contains just clean water. And my dirty water goes into my rinse well. You'll have seen me use this lots of times before. So once this gets dirty in here, I pull the plug. And this little water bottle, which is here, is going to chug along and it refills this area with clean water. And you can do that as often as you need to. So I don't have to keep running to a bathroom to get clean water. So the first thing I'm going to do is put everything on my left because I'm left-handed. And we want to wet our paper. Now this is a piece of Canson Watercolor Cold Press. And again, as I say, I will link everything up. And I'm just going to go over and make it wet so that I get those nice blends in there. The wetter your paper, the more your colours are going to blend. And I'm going to do them this time on the diagonal. Uh, I will just say, uh, if you are watching this and you enjoy it, please do give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you don't already subscribe to us. We would love to have you here. And we have lots of YouTube live, Facebook lives, uh, video tutorials, um, all sorts of fun crafty things. So I'm just going in a diagonal and I'm picking out one colour at a time. So I'm going to use all five colours on this side if I can. We'll see how much room we have. And to start with I'm just starting with some stripes and then we will blend it all together after. So we're now going into those bronze and finally I'm going to go into this ready copper. and just keep checking the comments. Now the next thing we are going to do is we're going to hold our cardstock each way. Now because this is wet, our paints will all flow this way, one into the other, and then we can hold it the other way and get it to flow this way into the other. And this gives us a really seamless blend. So I'm now going to pick up from the lightest to the darkest. I'm just gonna go over here because it wasn't blending particularly well. And then I'm going to pull all those colours right to the edge. Now we will dry this 
And then the way that I add those really intense colors, so I'm gonna use my Ranger Heat It tool here, and I'm just gonna give it a quick dry. And normally this is something I do, I pause the recording and then I press go again once it's dry. So I'm gonna try and dry this as quickly as I can. The Ranger Heat It gives you the same temperature of an embossing tool, but with less airflow. So it won't move those watercolors around because I want those nice defined stripes in there. And that's the reason I use this tool over my embossing tool. You can heat emboss with this, but it'll probably take you about 20 minutes to actually heat emboss an image, I suggest that you uh, use a heat embossing tool for that. So let's see how we're doing. That's dry enough. So I'm just going to get some clean water again. I'm gonna start with that light color and make some more stripes. And I want my brush to be really wet because I want those colors to flow together. Like this. And then we can use our medium gold, which is that kind of nice middle toner. And we are going to cut the piece down, so if it doesn't go right to that corner down here, that's fine. As I said previously, if you're watching our Facebook Live, that uh, this is completely an impromptu card because of the floods we've had. So I um, haven't planned this, I kind of had an idea in my head. And really, I'm just hoping that it all pulls together. So I want a nice clean brush and I'm going to start up here. And again, I'm just going to wash those together. And you can see doing it a second time how I've got much stronger colours than I had the first time. Again, I want to dry this off because we're going to trim it down and do our die cutting. So I'm going to put all my water out the way because I have had quite enough of water disasters. I'm going to put that over there. Let's dry this off. I'm going to close my watercolours. What I tend to do is just put my watercolours to the side for five, ten minutes. They'll dry out and then I can put them back in my drawer. So when I'm drying a piece of watercolour, I dry the top to a reasonable kind of dryness. Um, so it's maybe just slightly moist but there's no pooled water on the top. And then what I do is I turn it over. And I'm going to move the Teflon mat out the way because I don't want to transfer any colour. By drying the reverse side, you'll dry it much, much quicker and you won't get any burn marks on your paper. Uh, what you'll see is it flattens itself out because you're drying both sides of the paper and you're drying it a little bit more evenly. So we'll pop all this to the side. And I'm just also sorting out my die cutting plates. So I've got those here as well. As you can see, I still use those stamping up plates. They will last you forever. And finally, we'll go back to this side just briefly. Now, of course, if you were not videoing this like I am, you could spend as long as required. And when you get a warped piece like this, if you run this through your Big Shot, you'll find it comes out a lot flatter. I mean, I'm going to die cut it anyway, so that's not an issue. But if you want to just stick this down as a background, just run it through your Big Shot with your normal sandwich or whatever die cutting machine you have, and you will find you get a much straighter piece. So that's pretty much dry and I'm just going to go with the flow on this one so the first thing we need to do is grab some of these and these only arrived at the weekend so I'm going to write celebrate so we want a C and I'll tidy these up with my wire cutters later but that's C, E, and I want L, so I'm gonna do, it's nine letters in Celebrate, so it works perfectly to do a three by three piece of die cutting. So I need this. I'm gonna use my Tamiya masking tape because it's my favorite to use on top of something I've already done. So I'm gonna line up this C, E, L. And let's just, we need to scooch this up. Yeah. And you get two A's. So I'm just B. Let's find our R. 
we may be able to cut this all at once so I'm just getting my pieces out and of course if you have got wire cutters to hand it would be much quicker but we were again in the hotel last night so I'm just grabbing things as we go along we're nearly at our R B R A T and we'll need to reuse our E at the end. So now we can work out exactly where we want to put them. I'm going to put them directly onto my Sizzix plate. And I'm going to move all this out of the way. I make sure you can see this as well. Now I use two different types of cutting pads. So I have these beautiful glittery ones and I use this on the top and I use just a clear one on the bottom. Um, now the reason I do that is so that I don't accidentally cut on this purple one. Uh, I always know that this one goes on the top and this is my one to go on the bottom. It's just a visual reminder and because it's so pretty, I don't want to cut on it and ruin it, that it works perfectly for me. So if you often find yourself with the wrong sandwich or you find that you do things and it's not quite right, then that may be a good way for you to go. So I'm going to move these up just slightly. And you can use all sorts of different words. You could use someone's name, just depending. And however many letters you've got, you can work out whether you need to do a four by two or a three by three or what you actually want to be able to do. So I'm gonna pop this on the top and I'm gonna risk it with no masking tape. I'm holding that sandwich really firmly and I'm running it through my vagabond, which is just to the side. There we go. So we've run that through, my L is stuck to my purple, we need that E back again. So you can see here, I'm going to carefully lift this out, and I'm going to keep the two pieces that came out of the A, we may use them, we may not. Now of course you have all these letters left over with your beautiful watercolour pieces that you can use on your next project as well. So you don't need to throw these letters away, you could use them again on something else. So I will keep these just in case. And I'm going to keep the centre pieces just in case I feel I need them at the end. So let's remove all of this off of here and we can cut our final E. And I'm just going to let's uh, see where did I put my E? It's a pre cut E. Uh, there it is. So I'm going to pop my E down. And I think this card will be quite forgiving if my celebrate is not quite perfect. So again, I'm going to hold my sandwich firmly. I'm going to risk it with no masking tape. And now we can cut our border. Now my idea was to cut a border with one of the lovely waffle flower border dies. I'm not sure if that's going to work. I've got my uh, waffle flower tote here. And I'm just going to quickly have a scroll just to grab a couple. If they fit, we'll just offer it up and see. If they don't, we're just going to cut it out using our paper trimmer. You can see I'm a waffle flower fan because I have bought pretty much everything. Here we go. So these are our options. Let's just grab one and see. This is lacy layers, which is super pretty. And you can see I store them on magnet sheets in here. And I think we can do this. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a technique to make a die cut in a size that you don't necessarily already have. So you offer it up to one side where you want to cut. There's three E's, not two. Is it not celebrate? Rather than cel or maybe it's celebrate. Maybe I can't spell this morning. Um, hopefully you'll forgive my spelling this morning. 
definitely not had enough coffee yet. So I'm going to run this through where it's lined up correctly on one side. Yeah, I think you're right, it's celebrate, not celebrate. Sorry. I'm trying to be all clever doing this live rather than pre-recorded. So what you can then do, and we'll save that piece of tape. So now you have a piece with your right curly piece on there. And then what we can do is we can line up those scallops here and you can cut it on the reverse side. So we want our scallop to be there. So I'm going to line that up. You can see it's lined up in here. I'm going to turn this over, holding it down so it's in the right place. Actually, I'm going to move it along one scallop because otherwise it's not going to look right. So once you have stuck it down, now my piece of masking tape's curled up. So these are all the things you don't see in those polished, edited videos. So that's now in the right place. You can see it's lined up there in my die in those scallops, like this. And now we can run it through our die cutter again. As I say, this is not something I've made before. This was just an idea I had and I was going to do it as a full video and I thought as we hadn't had one in a while, we would do it. Now, so there you go. You can see you have that nice custom scallop size. So you do not have the die, either your squares or your rectangles in exactly the right size, but you can make it even if it is decorative and even if you can't spell. So um, there we go. So now I can grab my card base. And I grabbed a craft and a white, both in Nina. One's solar white, one's desert storm. I'm going to fold this in half. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Holly. Uh, things go wrong, it's live. We'll just, we'll go with the flow. It'll still look pretty. So I think that's a bit plain. So let's try this on the white. And I think that looks lovely, but we need some shadow stamping. So there's some lovely new sets from Waffle Flower. I'm just having a quick scroll through what we have. And I think these sunflowers are pretty cute. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. I'm not the only one who can't spell this morning. Um, let's grab these two sunflowers. I think they're really pretty and they will go perfectly with our celebrate theme now i'm just going to the side i'm just grabbing a different color of ink and i grabbed the fossilized amber the wild honey and the spice marmalade because they match in with the colors that we have chosen i'm going to grab a couple of acrylic blocks out the drawer Put the big one on there and the little one on there. I'm also going to make sure my stamp chamois to hand. So here's my coconut. And it's a little bit dry because I haven't managed to craft at all. Uh, so what I do is when it goes all dry and crispy because it's not been used, is just spritz it with some water. And I'm going to leave that in there for a couple of minutes while we do our stamping. So we'll pop that to the side and let it reactivate. So let's stamp our base. So let's start off with some fossilized amber. And I'm just going to stamp randomly. And let's grab some wild honey. I love these oxides, all the colors in there. And of course, some of these sunflowers are going to shine through our celebrate. And we'll have a spiced marmalade. You can see my I'm just going to wring it out onto the floor rather than onto my card. But you can see my stamp chamois is now back to nice and usable. So we'll just give these a wipe off. Dry off my hands. And now I can stamp uh, I don't know if I dare risk that. Okay. I shouldn't have risked that. That's the advantage of using a stamp platform. You wouldn't get that blurry image. But Okay, so there's our background. Let's move everything out the way. And I'm also going to 
grab some kitchen towel and just move that little bit of water that's left from that. And the final step is we're going to grab our big foam roll. So this is my roll of foam and I am going to grab my background panel and I'm going to cut some pieces to go on here. So I'm going to use my Eco Success scissors and if you didn't join us at the beginning I, I will have all of these links available to you maybe give me five minutes as soon as this is finished and I will make sure they are all there for you and a link to our crafty sales page which will give you some coupon codes for waffle flour for Simon Says Stamp and also some of these supplies in scrapbook.com are on sale so we'll have all of those links for you too and you can see here I'm just snipping away on little pieces to go in between so that we have nice coverage. I don't want this to sag. And this little piece will fit perfectly in there. And what I tend to do, when you watch me in videos and I produce a foam piece, I tend to cut a piece off, like this. And then I stick it on here and it will still be plenty of sticky. It works absolutely fine. And then I can just pick them up when I need them. If I've cut a piece that's too long, again, it just goes straight on here. So let's pull this off. like this and you could do double if you wanted more depth and just go around and I'm going to place this panel here in the middle now these watercolors I'll lift them up in a second have a lovely shimmer to them now you can choose if you want to put the centers in your A's um, I think I might this time so to do that I'm going to make myself a really small slither of foam I'm going to stick that even smaller slither of foam on the back and you could use tweezers for more precision if you're taking your time unlike me right now and then I want that other piece to go in here and put that down here and it just goes over the edge so you can still snip it even when it's in place I'm not going to do the bees. I'm going to leave those so that you can see through them. So you can see that you can see those really pretty uh, waffle flower sunflowers in the back. They kind of remind me of the, really the waffle flower brand. I think that should become their logo. I may petition Nina for such things. And hopefully you can see if I lift this up, that lovely shimmer on the watercolours. It kind of goes from gold all the way through to copper. Now this has taken me 20 minutes to make and as you know I had nothing planned I've just kind of gone with the flow and we have our finished card so I hope you enjoyed that I will take a still uh thank you Susan still photo to put on the front here and it will also be linked on our Facebook page for you and as I say just give me a couple of minutes to get those links up and running for you and that will be below the video thank you for joining us today and thank you for sticking with us through our disaster zone of floods and we hope to see you again soon here at Hedgehog Hollow do subscribe to the channel if you don't already and we love a thumbs up on our videos too it really helps us so happy stamping and we'll see you again soon bye